I powered a whole weekend on one compact 12 volt, 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery for under $350. No generator, how? A quick note before we start. Dr. Prepare sent me this battery to test. No payment, no script control, no review approval. These are just my results. The battery case is about 15.2 by 7.7 .7 by 10 inches. It stores around 300 amp hours or about 3.84 kilowatt hours at 12.8 volts. That's roughly triple the runtime of a common 100 amp hour battery with the same kinds of loads. And it fits really well in my RV bays or my SUV. Here's how I use it on the road. I pre-cool the 12 volt portable fridge in the motorhome. Leave it running on the same 12 volt battery the whole time. On the drive and at camp, overnight the battery kept the fridge cold, LED camp lights on, and a small fan running without drama. Question I've gotten before, does anything crash when an air compressor runs or power tool or heavy duty appliance or an induction burner? And I answer, the air compressor and big power tools or induction burners, when you start them all have a short, sharp startup spike. It's common, but the battery is rated for 200 amps continuous discharge. So airing up tires, cooking on the induction burner, didn't even make the lights flicker or kick the fridge off. I use the right fuse close to the battery to protect the wiring when a surge hits. Another question I've had is if it's below 32 degrees Fahrenheit outside, the battery won't charge. What's that about? Like all lithium iron phosphate batteries, camping below freezing isn't recommended. If outside air is below 32 degrees, but not the inside fridge temperature. The battery's protection will block charging until the battery warms up. You can still run your gear, just plan to charge your battery when the temperature is above 32 degrees Fahrenheit inside the rig, in an insulated bay or later in the day. On a hot day charging, what really happens? Well, there's a temperature sensor on the cells. If it gets hot during charging, it pauses and continues when it cools. Parking in the shade or giving the battery some airflow helps keep charging steady. Here are the only numbers that matter. The nominal voltage is 12.8 volts. You'll see it a bit higher when it's full or lower as it drains. Capacity is 300 amp hours, which is about 3.84 kilowatt hours. Charge to about 14.6 volts and continuous discharge is 200 amps. Practical charge rate is about 60 amps, but the listed maximum is 100 amps. You could build up to 48 volts in series or add capacity in parallel at 12 volts. The battery weighs just under 60 pounds and has two rope handles. One bad fuse can wreck a weekend. Here's the safe way. The fridge runs straight from the doctor prepare battery on its own circuit. A dedicated positive lead with an inline fuse or DC breaker mounted close to the battery's positive post and a matching negative lead back to the battery. I don't share the line with lights or chargers so that if another circuit trips, the fridge keeps running. I use the appropriate wire size that the fridge recommends. For most 12 volt portable fridges, 12 AWG is fine for short runs and 10 AWG is safer for longer runs. Lights in the fan go to the small fuse 12 volt panel I have and the phone radio and charging lives on a separate fuse lead or outlet box. The battery's main internal BMS is not your main safety device. Put a correctly sized fuse or DC breaker near the positive post as I mentioned before. Use cable thick enough for your longest run or your highest draw so voltage drop stays low, around 3% or less. Another question I get is, what drains more, the fridge or the air compressor? Most gear sips power. The fridge cycles, LEDs are tiny, and the fan is modest but the air compressor or my induction burner is the quick spike. The larger capacity gives you headroom for that spike while everything else keeps rolling. Is 60 pounds a one person lift? It's close, but with the rope handles, it makes it manageable for one person with two hands. Once in place, you won't want to move it much. Pick a spot with airflow that doesn't steal your storage and avoids heat pockets. So here's my five steps so that you could stop babysitting your power. Start your trips fully charged. Leave the fridge, lights, and fan plugged in. No plug swapping. Use the air compressor and other heavier loads 
For example, vac your vacuum, power tools, induction ovens, etc. when you need them with proper fusing and cable sizing. If it's below freezing outside, wait to charge until the battery is warmer than 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's very hot, expect charging to pause and resume on its own. Don't trust the BMS to save you. Design it like it won't. And again, as I mentioned before, and this is so important, keep the fuse or breaker near the positive post. Size the wiring for worst case current and length. That's what keeps a small issue from becoming a big one. Cold food, steady lights, zero drama, that's the goal. For me, this compact 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery made travel simple. The fridge stays cold, the fan turns, the lights work, devices charge. I spend less time thinking about power and more time on the road. And I have to thank Dr. Prepare for this 12 volt 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Anyway, Enjoy your travels. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again, Dr. Prepare.